Hi everyone, my name is Jacob Larsson, future thinker and advisor at Global Utmaning. Thank you Google's developers group for the invitation and to letting me be part of this session. So, I'm here to talk about this current crisis and maybe look a little bit into what's going to happen next and what could we do. So, I'm going to put a bit of a different angle on this and focus more on the mindsets and perspectives that we can have. And before we do so, let's go back a hundred years to the beginning of 1900 because there was a great scientist who was now trying to look into the telegram and the potential of visualizing it. And he thought, well, this is a great idea. He stumbled upon this new technology, developed it, and maybe the US defense industry would be interested in further developing it and fund it. He approached them. And unfortunately, the US defense and the army didn't see this potential at the time and declined the offer. So that new technology would have to wait another 30 years or so. In 1935, the Scottish scientist Robert Watson Watt picked this up, further developed it. And he, he had a similar thought process. He went to the British defense industry and said, well guys, we have this technology and I do need funding and we can do something together here. And as you may know, what's just around the corner? The Second World War. And this technology will have its own infrastructure around it. And it will be called the Home Chain Radar. And of course, as you may understand, we're talking about the radar as a new technology that has been implemented here into the defense industry and it would have set up a whole new infrastructure on the south coast to cover its areas from the bombardments and the bomb ships from the Luftwaffe. The Luftwaffe with its 40,000 airplanes even the British politician Mr. Baldwin was very skeptical he said the bomber always gets through and well, as you know, we are thankful to confirm, Mr. Baldwin, that it did not get through this time. Because the British armies, they were capable now of moving and allocating the resources, depending on where the enemy were. And because this new radar and the whole system could spot an enemy a hundred miles um, around them. And I think that was a great thing. It revolutionized everything. And they have now appointed this to be one of the key factors for their success. And that's a beautiful thing. And that was just one technology making a huge difference in a time of crisis. Now you may be thinking, Jacob, why are you bringing this up right now? Well, we are in a crisis right now. And I believe myself that technology is going to play a huge part of this. And I think it's fascinating to think of, we are now here talking, and it's a group of people that are very interested in technology. I bet you have many X projects or code strips that you have written that could be exceptional. It might be the new Raider, who knows. And there's another, let's introduce another person, Nathan Furr, innovations professor at INSED University. He has recognized some different areas that are keen in times of uncertainty. He said that, well, the first one is learning. And we can see the companies that have been most successful through the times of crisis, they have seen this as a learning opportunity. This new changed environment can be a test platform for new technology and revolutionize things like the radar did. And there are other factors as well. The fact of the game accepting frustration, accepting the fact that it's going to be tough. But you can do things about the game. You can challenge the game. And the fact that it's random. There are things that we can't predict in times of crises. How reactions will be and how things further develop. Of course, we are not at a time of crisis than it was a hundred years back. But it's a time of crisis and the thought process can be similar sometimes. And let's bring another person, Mark Pollock, an exceptional man, a champion, a true hero, I would say. 
He has gone through things I can't even imagine myself. He has a beautiful mindset uh, and he, a view of life that I think could be interesting to compare to Nathan Furr's findings. Because what Mark Pollock says, and he has climbed base camp on Everest. He has hiked to the North Pole. I mean, wow, that's just brilliant. And on top of that, he has unfortunately gone through accidents, so he did that as he was blind. And now he has gone through and been paralyzed as well in parts of his body. But he has this brilliant mindset where he says, you have two options. One is that you can be the spectator of your own life. Meaning that you can just stand aside and watch your life from a distance. You won't take ownership of it. But the other option is that you take the ownership of your own life. You own it, you challenge it. And if you compare that to then, what Nathan first says of the game, that we can challenge this now. We can be the player in this game. And I think that's a beautiful thing in times of uncertainty. And let's bring another aspect then. What about collaborations? Because you have, if you have this challenging mindset as a, as a gamer and a player of your own life, you can really think about the different things you can develop. I mean, I'm sure that you have many great projects out there. You have written some uh, codes, apps, you name it, whatever. And it might be interesting, if it, you haven't done it already, to introduce new perspectives. People that you normally wouldn't re reach out to. I think that's what crisis can open up for, to challenge the status quo. There's a great example of that down in the Netherlands, whereby they have this whole this concept of COVID innovations, where they early on, super early on, brought together the government, institutions, corporates, entrepreneurs, and people with a general interest or knowledge who were keen and interested in develop new apps, develop new products, services, and such. This is a time when we can go outside boxes and really do interesting things. And like I said, I'm sure that you have many of them. I've also challenged myself in this. And I believe this is a continuous learning process as well, as Nada Fur was referring to. That this is a time when we can revamp our business models. We might look into new options of services and resources that we can even further develop together. So what I believe I'm trying to say here is this might be a great time to challenge ourselves and really look into the things that we are really passionate about. And like I said, I'm sure that you have these X projects that could be interesting for someone that normally wouldn't have the chance to look into. And let's collaborate. I'm stretching out the hand here. I'm sure that we have multiple projects that we could be interested in collaborating on. And I'm sure there will be hundreds more people around us that will feel the same. So we're gonna reach out the hand to all of them. That's gonna be our challenge together. So let's follow Mark Pollock. Let's be this, this player of our own lives and do great things and learn from Nathan and the historical events that we've seen in previous times. Well, that's all for me. My name is Jacob and I hope you are all safe and take care of yourselves now and let's challenge ourselves. All the best for now. Goodbye.